Sí, sí.
Genesis chapter 32. The same night, Jacob arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and everything else that he had, and Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. For he said, Why is it you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the people of Israel do not eat the sinew of the thigh that is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip on the sinew of the thigh. O Lord, have mercy on us. A reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Finally, then, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you ought to live and to please God just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. For you know that what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus, for this is the will of God, your sanctification. That you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and on honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. O Lord, have mercy on us. A reading from Matthew chapter 15. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged, saying, Send her away, for she's crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. O Lord, have mercy on us. We are an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text has been caused by the Holy Spirit to be written by the prophet Moses. Genesis chapter 32. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. This story of Jacob wrestling with God is quite interesting. It is just one little snippet that we have in the entire life of Jacob and all that goes on. And I pray that it is an encouragement for you this day as you continue to live out your Christian faith all your life long. Jacob is renamed Israel, and this is very traumatic and effective for history. Israel means to strive with God. And so this name reflects on all those who will come after Jacob and be called Israelites. Those who strive with God. God's people are those who wrestle with him. And this should give you a clue how the text, how the word of God applies and works faith in you today. When you strive, wrestle, pray, and hold on to God. Now Jacob, well, he's not the best guy on the block. He gets his name from grabbing the heel of his brother Esau as they were both twins in the womb. And as Esau was delivered, so Jacob is there holding on to his brother's heel, always wanting what is not his, preying on others' weaknesses. And this takes effect very quickly. As Esau goes out to hunt, provide for the family, here is Jacob waiting in the wings, ready to steal. He has cooked up a hot bowl of stew. And anyone who's out in the cold or who has been working knows how good fresh cooking food smells when you enter. And so, just like that, Jacob trades Esau's birthright. Then when his father is old and blind, here is Jacob again, waiting in the wings, dressing up in clothes that aren't his own, smelling like his brother, an imposter. He has now tricked his father into blessing him instead of Esau. And finally, Jacob, when he is old, he goes and works for his uncle Laban for 14 years, breeding all the strong sheep for his own herd and giving all the weaker ones to his uncle Laban. This Jacob and this wrestling match, it is just one little detail in the span of a lifetime, but this little detail, his changing of the name, his wrestling with God, this teaches us how God will bless us eternally. Now we find Jacob in our text. And if you catch these little details, pay attention to them. Even read and see the text right in front of you because there's a lot going on that we might miss. Here is Jacob, and what is he doing? He's sending all his family away. He's got two wives, he's got two female servants. We will learn he will have as much as 13 children, but probably more. And Jacob, with all his possessions, everything in a moving van, he sends it all away. Two different camps, two different ways that he sends them away. Why is Jacob doing this? You see, Jacob has finally realized that every little trick and every little cheat and every little lie that he's done all throughout his life is now finally coming back to bite him. Esau is coming. His brother, who's stronger, who's a hunter, and has 400 of his own men. Jacob realizes there's no more running. There's no more hiding. It's time to face the facts. He sends all that he has away because coming down the road, he is going to have to face his sins. So Jacob, alone, he will take it. He will pay for what he has done. No one else. 
He hopes his family gets away scot-free so that he can finally confess and satisfy. But right before this happens, we get evening. It is night, and Jacob is ambushed by a mysterious wrestler with no moonlight, no nightlight. Jacob is all of a sudden in a wrestling match. It is as strange to him as it is to you. It makes no sense and what in the world is going on. During the match, Jacob is prevailing, and yet this mysterious wrestler, we don't know if it's Macho Man Randy Savage, we don't know if it's The Undertaker or any of your other favorite WWF wrestlers. During the match, Jacob's hip is put out of socket. And finally, we learn that Jacob is holding on to this person who can, with just one touch, dislocate his hip so that he limps as he walks away the next day. But by morning, it is finally paid off and Jacob has prevailed. He has prevailed and we learn finally the mysterious wrestler is in fact God. It makes no sense. Not only that God is there wrestling, but that God now has lost. What happened? Why? Now Jacob couldn't even defeat Esau, his brother, alone. But this, Jacob versus God, this is more unevenly matched than Hulk Hogan versus a baby. That's no contest, right? We don't know how Jacob did it, if it was an arm bar, if it was just an old-fashioned nookie, but God has been defeated. And Jacob has won. Jacob beat God. Jacob beat God. He is almighty. And yet God admits defeat. And here, dear Christian, is the gospel. Because Jacob, who was wanting to take all the sin, all what he had done before, finally was ready to face the facts and meet his brother and die at his hands, now Jacob prevails. And God is defeated. Lo and behold, the next day Esau comes with all his army, and Jacob bows down to him three times and is ready to receive the blow from his brother. And Esau hugs him and forgives him. Jacob confesses his sins, and Esau forgives, and God pays for it. This little detail would teach us how God would bless us eternally. After the match, Jacob, holding on yet to this mysterious God, asks for his name. Well, God gives Jacob a name, Israel, to strive with God. He puts his hip out of socket, but he does not tell him his name. Why is this? I'd ask you, dear Christian, to ponder it a little more deeply than you might at first. Why would God not give Jacob his name? He blesses him. He's silent about his name, but he blesses them. And this little detail shows us how God would bless us, even a difficult divine son. What about you? Where are you in the story? And I would surmise, and I would tell you absolutely that you are Jacob, renamed Israel. But caution, dear Christian, for you should not do this readily. For in the Bible, 
People are too ready to put themselves into everybody's shoes. You are not Moses, holding up your hands so that the Amalekites would be defeated so long as they are risen. You are not David who defeats Goliath with what? One stone. And you are not Jacob in 1800 BC physically wrestling with God. But you are Israel. An Israelite. You have wrestled with God. With your soul. In prayer, have you ever got, asked God, what is going on? Why is this happening? You've pushed and pulled and questioned and asked and asked and asked. Yes. You are Israel. Have you ever yelled at God? Remember God? You promised. You promised to bless me. Yeah. You've done that. You bless me. You're Israel. Now Jacob, wrestling with God, he holds on to him in this difficult divine silence. He receives his name, but he does not give God's name back to him. And why does God choose that time to be silent? Why does God not give him an answer there? What is this little detail that could possibly be any and at all helpful to us? How is God's silence? An answer to our questions, to our wrestling, to our acting. What do you call a God who is silent but blesses you in defeat? Now, aside from the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the name we get most often in the Bible for God is very closely related to Jacob. To distinguish God from all those other little gods, you often might say, oh yes, my God is the big G, the capital G, and the other gods are the lowercase g. But the Bible doesn't stop and say, now remember, reader, we're talking about big G God here. No. The Bible gives God a name. The Bible calls him the God of Abram. A pagan, fatherless sinner who God made into a father of countless children. The Bible gives God a name of Isaac, who was there on the altar, ready to be slaughtered and burnt. And yet the Lord provided another. The Bible gives God a name, the God of Jacob, a schemer, cheater, liar, a trickster. And yet, who God blesses. He is known as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is his name. The God who is defeated and blesses. The God of sinners. That is his name. Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sin. There was a man who was in agony. Like you, he wrestled with God. And he pleaded and prayed and pushed and pulled and asked and asked and asked for God to help. For God to stop. For God to save. And it came to a point when he was in the middle of his agony that he cries out so that everyone could hear his prayer. My God! Oh my God! Why have you forsaken me? And God was silent. What do you call the name of a God who blesses you by his defeat? It 
if you haven't gone through a sleepless night like Jacob, you will. And dear Christian, learn from Israel. Learn this. Because it is the difference between life and death. Unbelief and belief. Heaven and hell. Though Jacob is hurting, though Jacob has sinned, he holds on to this God who's even silent, and he is blessed by this God who is defeated. You are Israel, and you must hold on to this God and his word. You must hold on to this God and his word. As you are asking and pushing and pulling and requesting and asking God to stop, to change, to save you, we trust and hold on to this God who was crucified for you. Like David, like Jacob, will you teach your children and others the name of God who blesses you in his defeat. Will you hold on to this God and never let him go as you suffer? Will you be blessed by this God with a blessing that never ends, that forgives your sins and gives you eternal life? Dear Christian, you are Israel. Strive, wrestle, and hold on. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We collect our offerings.
We of ourselves, we have no strength. By your mighty power, defend us from all adversities that happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts that assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. In our prayers, we remember our church, those who undergo temptation and need to confess their sins. Our world and our country, those who experience addiction. Blessing for all those who are married, including Mitchell and Shelby, who were united in holy matrimony yesterday. We pray for those in need of healing, including Jim Brazel, Tiffany Dunaway, Bernice Grimes, Zoe Haler, Vivi Kinkler, Lorraine Mercer, Jackson Mottashed, upcoming procedure, Jacob Overton, Barb Putnam, Susie Rush, Phyllis Will, who is passed and her family, Jen Wilson upon celebration of recovery from her cancer, Craig Wolf, Paul Iago, and Gary Winter. Remember, O oh Lord, Matthew, our Synod President, Mark, our District President, David, our Circuit Visitor, Marcus, our Pastor, and all pastors in Christ, forgive their sins, strengthen their faith, that they proclaim the repentance and forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Gracious Lord, remember all who experience trials, temptations, and are in need of forgiveness. By your law, move them to confess their sins and strengthen our synod as we meet today as a voters in order to participate as a sister congregation within your church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Remember our leaders of our nation. Give them direction that they be bold for peace and prosperity, truth and justice, piety and religion to dwell in our land. Remember our armed forces and those who serve us as police officers domestically, that they would serve with integrity and honor and be kept safe in their vocations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Remember, Lord, those who have been united in holy matrimony, including Mitch and Shelby, that husbands would sacrifice and cling to that which is good, and wives submit to their husbands who are given to them, that Christian families would flourish, to hear, share, and live in the grace of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Remember, Lord, those who are suffering. Especially we pray for all who are in need. We remember the family of Phyllis, who has mourned their dear sister in Christ. We pray for Jackson, who will undergo tubes in his ears this week. Comfort them with your presence. Sustain their faith through your gracious promises and bring healing in the way you know best. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Remember, O oh Lord, all who are undergoing cancer, chemotherapy, and are in recovery, especially we pray for Jen Wilson having completed her chemo. Continue to bless her and her vocation, and bless all those who administer and take care through procedures and treatment to return those to their families. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Remember, O oh Lord, your promise that all who believe in your Son will not perish but have eternal life. Grant us faith to pass beyond this life and be blessed eternally in the life to come and the resurrection of the dead. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in this same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The great.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. 